who would now that we're at the end, who would you guys say is the best character? I mean, uh, I'd, I'd be happy to concede it's Nemesis. Would agree with you that it was Nemesis. Yeah, yeah probably. Probably the only one with anything going on a little uh, bit. <laughs> I suppose I have a question though. Is this the worst film that he's made? Oh yes, definitely. It's between this it, and Amelia. Absolutely. Dead. Yeah, Army of the Dead yeah, was yeah, really um, bad. This is worse than one. And I remember I felt that it was really competitive between one and Army the, of the Dead. The thing is, Army of the Dead is visually appalling, like even more than this. It is. That's definitely going to drag it down. Yeah, because quite the a bit script yeah. is all also just terrible in Army of the Dead. Oh as well. yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's between these two for sure. Um, I could see like, this one winning. Yeah. I could. I just. Uh, it's been yeah. long enough that I haven't seen Army of the Dead, so I can't make a you know a confident And claim. I will not rewatch it. You know what's coming to mind is that oh. moment where a paratrooper just drops himself into a bunch of zombies. Uh, just like, what the in fuck? Slow motion. <laughs> in slow, slow motion. motion. Oh god. Yeah, that's pretty stupid. This, this is probably this, this is certainly like the only film I think which absolutely does literally make me sick. <laughs> in that like, I did watch it yesterday. I did get mega flu yesterday. I woke up feeling better, and now we've gone through it, and I feel really ill again. So it no. must be the film. I, I think it might actually be Zack Snyder's Rebel Mooniverse. Is I'm allergic to it. Well, you might not make happening. it until tomorrow. What's interesting is the <laughs> most ill I've been after watching a film is Army of the Dead. I had a severe <laughs> headache after seeing it, and I'm almost certain it's because he f***ed up my eyes when I was watching it. Not nice, Zachary. <laughs> Which is, yeah, that's quite an accomplishment in and of itself. But I mean, I mean, surely, surely this is the end of of like just getting an ungodly amount of money to make this i mean how can they justify making more of these films oh yeah and as people just point out these are two anthony hopkins movies like yeah. <laughs> what the f like he's barely <laughs> in it at him. all and doesn't do anything like what uh, okay well uh, yeah i forget if we said earlier but zach wants this to kind of launch like a multimedia franchise kind of like what happened with star wars um, so, you know, video games, comics, animations. Oh, yeah, it's going to die. It's um, going to die so it's hard. not happening. It, yeah. Well, they did the same with Army of the Dead as well. That was meant to, because yep. there was like a prequel movie. There's meant to be like an animated series. I like it. This is, this reminds me a lot, this kind of attitude of, um, you know how like a lot of the live service games, like the early live service games would declare themselves. We're a 10 year game. That's what we are. We're a 10 year game. It's not. Like, you don't get to decide whether that's going to be the case. Mm. The audience decides whether yeah. or not your game is going to be a 10-year game in much the same way. You don't get to decide that your series, like, that your thing is going to be a franchise. That gets decided based on oh, yes. uh, interest in what you made. You certainly don't get to be so brazen that you, when you get a two-part film already, which is already like, god yeah. damn, really? A two-part film, uh, like, two films... Um, and then also director's cuts as well, that you also get to have a trilogy of two-part films and video games and like an animated series or a comic. You don't get to decide It's all part of the that. confidence trick. Like this, is, this is sort of, I think, what Snyder does quite deliberately as a strategy is that he weighs in very, very heavily with these, these grand ambitions and he, all of these things which you know, producers or funders or investors might look at and say, oh, yeah, that sounds like it's a great idea. This guy has such confidence in what he's going to do that he's already, you know, given us this entire multimedia franchise. And same thing with the Snyder Cut. You know, they've got this huge fan base clamoring for the release of this extended cut. The fact that three quarters of them are robots is neither here nor there. So, he, like, I think this is part of the sales pitch. He, he actually sold it on the basis that this was going to be Star Wars in scope, not just Star Wars as a, a cheap knockoff of something that and was popular. Netflix would, and yeah, Netflix, Netflix would being, yeah, Netflix was well. dumb and said, yeah, that sounds great to us, we'll do it. But, you know, if the first Star Wars film came out and was as shit as Rebel Moon Part 1, it would never have been a franchise. No, but that was back in the era when they weren't trying to brute force franchises. It was, you made something yep. cool and people liked it enough and there was cause mm. to continue with uh, the series that you did it. Compared to this era where we're in now, where like they want to aggressively create franchises, not realizing that all of the franchises of today began as just like one film that was really cool. You know, Alien was just a really cool film. The Terminator was a really cool film. Star Wars was a really cool film. They weren't ordained by the studios themselves. They to weren't be ten year gay uh, movies. <laughs> no, that's right. So, they speaking of uh, things being brute forced, uh, someone told me I can't remember who. 
that according to Zach, the um, Army of the Dead takes place within the same universe yes. as Rebel Moon. Yes. Oh, yes. did he say um, that? Well, see, uh, well, I couldn't find the quote. I haven't looked for the quote, but yeah, if apparently yeah, yeah, that's yeah, something yeah. that that's, he said. He's, that's they been known for a while. Too. It's uh, something of a marketing ploy to be like that those two are connected when obviously they have absolutely nothing to do with each other in terms of era or meaning in any way, shape, or form. It's just it's just a arbitrary, like, they're my universe, I said so. Um... The nature of Rebel Moon being a um, original, quote unquote, sci-fi as well is always frustrating. People are like, you want these, but you won't support them. And it's like, of course I won't f support this. Like, why would I support this? <laughs> it's just not even close to what we're looking for. It's just, um, God, we just gotta advocate. Like, like people need to get better at writing scripts. This is abysmal. We've like reset. How do we get this bad? So much Actually, money. This is this is crazy to have spent this much money on something of this low quality that really is not of interest to many people. It's uh, it's 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 really been like a strange thing to watch. Where um, it's like in the lead up to Rebel Moon, there was some degree of hype for it because again, Army of the Dead just didn't have any impact on people's perception of him as a filmmaker. Uh, and it was being pitched as like, ah, yeah, this is him striking out on his own after DC, creating a brand new universe. Came out, people fucking hated it. Uh, got torn to shreds. And, and now it's in a place where it's like, oh, the second part's come out. And the most that people have to talk about is all of the really embarrassing things that he's been saying in interviews about his film and, and like director's yeah, cuts and about making the... a director's cut for a film that came out 12 years ago that nobody cares about. Well, and even about DC, anything he says now about like his interest in superheroes or his opinion, it's like, shut the fuck up. Poor Snyder fans, yeah. which I never thought I'd say, having to just watch <laughs> their god fail over and over and over and over. Yeah, because now it's like... in a place where instead of kind of being these weights around DC's neck that made it impossible for them to essentially make the decision they needed to do, which was reset hard and try it again. Now it's in a place where, like, everybody is so ready to just have it start over again. Well, um... And they're not interested in hearing any more about how, you know, Justice League Part 2 was actually going to have it be that Wonder Woman was a Kryptonian or something. Well, the, the Rebel Moon Part 1 and Part 2 have done more damage to Snyder's, like, cult than anything else could have. It's made them feel which is like... Funny kind of just yeah. passionless about his work which is what it would do well, yeah, I, mean, I don't what, know what? how you defend this movie I, I, I almost want to kind of try an exercise where I try my best to actually come up with defenses for this movie because I don't I can't even comprehend how you do it it is, it is so bad in every conceivable way I think um, the, the, the thing that I would want to focus in more on which I think is, is, is the most important thing in terms of ensuring that something um, thrives uh, as a as a creation is what is it about this that people would want to talk about positively and with passion? What is it about Rebel Moon that would inspire anybody to just like you know come out and say like oh yeah th this was a thing that was really cool and let me explain why this was cool for this reason this reason this reason and this reason and to almost like do it with um a degree of spontaneity in the same way that people would just casually refer to out moments from Star Wars that are really memorable and cool uh, or moments in Marvel movies not the cringe ones but I mean even then people still could do it for things like Multiverse of Madness you know they'd be like well that shot was cool oh that was cool this performance was really good uh, even in like a really really bad film like that they, they could still like latch onto certain things but like, what is there in this that would inspire anybody to be interested in talking about it instead of just watching it and ne never thinking about it again? I've seen uh, accounts that get posted every once in a while on Discord and stuff that Snyder fans being like, ignore the hate. This film is like, just, it's amazing and it's being loved mm -hmm. and it's getting engaged with. And, you know, Rebel Moon is a phenomenon. It's like, <laughs> no, it's okay. Not. You that can say like massive that as much as you want, but like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pico's got his mask on, he's crying, and yeah. he's got that opium in, in his lungs, but it ain't working. No, those vids are just like a jumbled mess just... of everything that he's ever seen in any movies. And it's like, I'm going to put this here and here and here. Yeah, but it's like, why are you putting this here? Uh, shut up, well, look, it's slow mo. It reminds like, me okay. a bit of uh, Sucker Punch in the sense that that was also a film that, uh, with a thin contextualization, just had him throwing in, like, pretty random uh, visuals and, like, uh, iconography, right? Where he'd, like, jump between, oh, look, they're, like, fighting robots with swords and 
Oh, that's like mm. kind of a steampunk World War One thing going on. Or look, they're fighting a dragon. It's it's, it's kind of like just when he does something original. The last time he did that, it was just yeah, throwing a whole bunch of stuff into a yeah. blender. And this feels like that taken to an extreme because this is in a place where like nobody was willing to say no. This is like what happens when nobody is willing to say maybe that's not a good idea. Instead, he's given all the money and all the resources he could need, and nobody pushing back against any of his ideas. Then they're like, this is what you get. Yeah. Get what it's, you it's, fucking it's, deserve. It's an embarrassing movie. Like it's it is embarrassing. Um it's it's like crazy levels of incompetence. It's one of these movies you you just watch it and then you just stop once in a while, just pause it and you're like, Holy what am I what is happening? Yeah, like, this, it this is, is crazy this happened. It is absolutely nuts. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I mean, this just feels like the product of a really sort of strange internet phenomenon that happened you know it's it's like this is what was downstream from it was yeah um, this is the, a, the a, symptom of hype this huge problem that never should happen <laughs> but i mean can netflix even afford to like spend this much money on like i that that red notice film that was successful for them wasn't it the the one with dwayne johnson and, yeah, and ryan i don't Reynolds. know why because i mean like, netflix no, are semi-famous for burning mm. money on projects i think this is just gonna yeah. be another one where they like like i said my assumption now is that they'll have renegotiations with Zack snyder in a couple of weeks or whatever and they'll be like this is unacceptable dude no one cares about this what have you made us I just, how can how can this money just get thrown around so Flippantly, though, for, like, films that have no cultural impact, it's it's really weird. But at the same time, it's like, well, I guess did they, they must have considered those films successful. But, I mean, this can't be. Like, how much money did they spend on this? It was like $160 million, right, for both parts together. That's insane. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's stupid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, we, we can't know, really, how successful um, part one was. And I guess we aren't yet going to know how successful part two is. But... The fact is, um, what's it called? Army of the Dead must have been successful enough. Well, it I say was. successful enough. It, yeah, it must have. It must have been extremely successful for them to be like, okay, Zach, here's 160 million dollars. Do your thing. Apparently, um, Army of the Dead got 75 million like uh, streaming views or whatever. That's the problem. Is like when you don't have just clear box office numbers, it gets annoying. Box yeah. office numbers. Are like I a feel really like we can all metric. reasonably agree on what we like. That's the best way because we have no actual useful numbers to get from them. Like, what was the? Because we can be honest about like we all recognize. I don't know if everyone here didn't like Bobby, but we can all recognize how crazy successful that was. Even if we didn't have box office numbers, we can like see yeah. how much of an impact it had. And how many people yeah, saw it? About it. Uh, similarly, Army of the Dead, it's like it didn't even happen. It's crazy. It had like a couple yeah. of mentions here and there, but like it just disappeared. And so many people don't know about it who like Snyder's work. They're like, oh, yeah, I didn't see it's that one yet. Weird. It's like, you didn't see well, it? Just bearing in mind that the Snyder cut was less successful than Godzilla vs. Kong. It was less successful than Mortal Kombat. Those apparently did better on uh, HBO Max. It's like, man... I, how how what what are the numbers that they were looking at that made them think that this was a good idea? And it's like I guess it was just that apparently a lot of people saw Army of the Dead even if nobody was talking about it. But like um, you know we don't know how much the first movie got. This one has to be less. Well, it's, it's it, one will be break down less. like further. I mean I'm looking at some of the figures for it now, and so like the Rebel Moon Part One got well whatever this means twenty three point nine million views in its first week i think that was um and then it, it adds another 34 million across the second week as well the problem with this like unlike you know with with cinema traditional box office where people have paid for a ticket you don't know how many of these people are clicking on it watching five minutes thinking this is boring and, and then, dumb yeah. and turning yeah. it off again mm -hmm. um from netflix's perspective i mean if Zack snyder has successfully convinced them and, and maybe it's not a complete lie that he has a really dedicated core audience then subscriber retention is also an important thing as, as long alongside sort of subscriber growth if he can reliably get lots of very silly people to go and watch his films um then that's doing its job but like i i was netflix spent something like is it seven billion i think on originals last year alone and I'm trying to name, like, off the top of my head, another Netflix original which has actually got the same name recognition as Rebel Moon does, which might be one of the reasons that they did sign up for a, a part two and a part three and four, five, and six, mm -hmm. is that 
it's by comparison, for all its shit, it's actually still quite recognizable, largely because it's shit, but still recognizable. Well, and because it's Zack reason. Snyder, it's it's rather than banking on whoever it was in in that uh, movie you guys mentioned a minute ago, R- Ryan Reynolds and Red was Notice, it The Rock? I think, wait, what was it called? Yeah, Red, Red Notice. It was yeah. called Red Notice. Yeah, Red Notice. That, yeah. And that was Ryan Reynolds and The Rock, or am I thinking Rock, of a different Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot. Yeah. yeah. So so that Awful. is that is a movie that is being sold. I've not seen it, but it's being sold on the fact that it's The Rock and Ryan Reynolds. Rebel Moon is being sold on the fact that it's Zack Snyder. Yeah, and that's true. Uh, that is not anywhere near as well, recognizable. It's, a it's draining. Uh, like the that that star power is just bleeding out all over the yeah. place. Same for Rebel Moon as an IP. It's done. Like nobody's going to take this shit seriously yeah. anymore. Well, yeah, I mean, there might have been a number of people who watched part one because it's like, well, we don't know anything about it. This is this is really being presented as the first thing he's done since DC. Let's take a look. And given the response to that film, I got to imagine that very a lot fewer people were willing to give the second one a shot. I mean, go, why would they? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the first one. no one will have watched two without having watched one. And the people who watched one and thought it was shit for the most part, unless you, well, unless you're people like us, I guess, <laughs> are not, not, yeah. not going to watch part two. Part one is so, so unnecessary, uh, though. Like, you don't even need to see it now. Part two has got that stupid opening monologue. If you have a friend who says, yeah, they're just going to come and attack this village and this is our team. That's it. You pretty much. But I mean, again, that's like that's kind of like skipping to like the final hour of Seven Samurai. Well, the thing about it is, the reason you can skip the first one is because there's just so much bloat. There's no, It's not like watching the first one makes the second one that much more meaningful. In fact, it makes it less meaningful or like more con- contradictory. It's not like a normal film where... True, seeing the stuff yeah. that comes before is important. It's it's more so just like you're not missing out on anything. It's just as bad, if not worse. So it's like just just watch the second one. In fact, don't I, watch either of them. <laughs> you know, go watch anything else. As, I yeah. love that as a tagline for Rebel Moon. It's not like a normal film. You're not missing anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's, normal. Looking at by, by way of comparison, for, this is again for, for part one. So part one gets gets those twenty three point nine million views in its first week. Um, that's actually ninth place of Netflix originals that year, I think. It's half the number got by something called Murder Mystery 2. Okay. Um, okay. Also, okay. something, something so called The Sandler Mother. <clears throat> okay, well, he somehow gets views. Uh, beaten by The Mother, Extraction 2, Leave the World Behind, Heart of Stone, You People, The Killer, Your Place, or Mine, and it's just shortly above The Pale Blue Iron, Out The Outlaws. Oh, I've, I've only even heard of some of those. So it's not actually that good by the standards of a Netflix original. It's just sort of solidly average. This is Rebel Moon Part 1 you're talking about there. Yeah. If um that's, if they continue that's pretty this, amazing. If we get like six actually six Rebel Moon movies, it's like the oh bottom will fall out at some point and uh th- 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 this is bad. This is just bad news for Zach. Not only is a a piece of art that he's released into the world, but financially speaking for uh, everyone involved this, this couldn't have been a good decision. It's just it's inevitable that consequences will come for him. Oh, oh yeah, 100%. There's, there's, you can't you can't keep making films this bad that cost this much money forever. No, at some point it has to stop. <laughs> you have to at stop. Some point, reason, you can't that keep reason, getting away with it. Well, kind of. Yeah, mm. it's uh, it's an insane uh, waste of resources that could have been used to create other films. Yeah. You know how many how many films could Netflix have made that you know who knows how I mean surely they would have ended up being better than this. <laughs> With the amount of money that they uh, they spent on this, I mean, roll the dice, and it's got to be better than this. Well, yeah, I'd rather watch the Adam Sandler movies are probably better, and they're probably yeah. better investments. I, I like I I don't know. I feel like streaming has made it way more confusing, like the nature of what it means, because it, it is crazy that like that film Red Notice was apparently the most successful film in Netflix ever, and it's like I feel like I've never heard anybody mention it. I did a forge like, on ever. it. One of the first ones I did. 
Well, I, I, other than like the initial coverage for these. Yeah, three, yeah. Other than Metal I'll Commander, be... it hasn't been mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> He's other the only Metal, person Metal, on the that. Only person to talk about the most popular film apparently on Netflix yeah. in its entire. Well, it's like you know, Glass Onion. That was Netflix. It's like, well, obviously that was successful. We know why. It's because it got talked about a lot. Ugh, there was a lot of conversation on, yeah. about it. It obviously managed to be successful. Whereas here, well, like, the only thing people are talking about with Rebel Moon are the cringe things that Snyder said in interviews. I'd say in the case of Glass Onion, there's a couple of other things that it arguably has going for it that this doesn't. Um, because you've got, I guess, the Ryan Johnson factor. Like, Ryan Johnson does have people, you know, he's kind of like a Zack Snyder in that he has people who will just watch the stuff that he does because they like his films. Um, so he's got a little bit of, I guess, star power there. Um, mm -hmm. You've also got that it's coming off of whatever the first one, Knives Out, which um, was like a lot of people liked that movie. Um, so, you know, the part two, it's going to have a built-in audience, unlike Rebel Moon Part 2. Um, and uh, Glass Onion has a lot of, like, big-name actors in it. Yes. Uh, which Rebel Moon does not. Well, like it, I mean, it has some, but not not on the same level, I wouldn't and, say. And a huge f*** up from Zach that Ryan Johnson nailed was make sure at least several characters at several points in your movie say everything is supposed to be retarded. <laughs> then That's your odd. fans know what the line is and they know how to defend the movie oh the third one of those on on the horizon don't we do we oh yeah i think so yeah oh god no stop it <laughs> i'm coming everyone loves them fantastic yeah. at least i mean those are those are i say those i i don't hate knives out but um i do whatever whatever the other one is <laughs> <laughs> fair enough <laughs> Um, what's the second one called? Glass Onion is Glass, bad yeah. in a totally different way to like Rebel Moon, I would say. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we um, we were happy to rate uh, Glass Onion as one of the worst it. films ever. Well, it's it's funny, but we we've talked about it, and I feel like we've been asked before. It's like, oh, which you know, if, if it was just like a hypothetical movie, let's say it's not like a film that exists, but the next movie that the filmmaker makes, which one would you rather watch? Slash, which one do you think would be better between Ryan Johnson and Snyder? And I feel like we usually default on Ryan Johnson because, yeah. like, at the very least, maybe he'll like stumble. It, like, they're they're different kinds of um bad storytellers. Um, yeah, like an idea it's, it's done badly like, is yeah. usually what you get with Ryan, but with Zach, it's edgy teenage it's like copycatting done an horribly. Idea at all. Exactly. Yeah, I'd go with Ryan Johnson as well because Ryan Johnson can direct a good scene and he can oh, arguably yeah, write a good Ryan scene. Johnson is, uh, he's got an eye, which at this point I think it's safe to say Snyder really doesn't. Or, or if he did, he's lost it because his films have gotten uglier yeah. uh, as time's gone yeah. on. It's really weird. 300 with this weird nice camera thing in there. Yeah, whatever this obsession is with this weird lens. Like at least a Ryan Johnson film is probably going to look really good at the very least. But you do have to deal with the uh, unbearableness of like something like Glass Onion, which yeah, that might be one of. The... Oh, don't remind me of that film. That oh. image, by the way, of the uh, trapped god they've got. Its arms are like in little holding things. It's it's kneeling down. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And Core's just like, sorry, got to blow you up. They just sorry put this. Face. It's like one of these things, though. Oh, this looks cool. Let's just put this in here without thinking about what this means for the world building and what is happening. Yep. Yeah, so again, just to... my ass, he wouldn't even thought about this. Like, oh, this looks cool. Let's put this here. And then also there's coal below it. And just, oh, God, this is so fucking dumb, dude. So, yeah, just to be clear for anyone in chat who, who missed this earlier or for anyone in chat who hasn't seen the film, all of the stuff that we're kind of mentioning about this thing being like an imprisoned... Uh, intergalactic energy god type thing that isn't actually in the film that requires no. external references but that is canonical in the rebel moon universe Nuts. well any Just... anything else you guys want to say about rebel moon part two the scar giver i think it made me sick too i don't know i'm just <laughs> tired <laughs> i'm oh, tired and sick me. leave me alone <laughs> I'm happy I don't need to look at this movie again for at least a while. Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe maybe number three and four and five and six is going to come out, and then we're going to watch them all in a row, and then we just jump off a bridge or something. I mean, maybe it's a blessing that um, Rebel Moon and um, Army of the Dead weren't released on the big screen, because that would have just hurt people's eyes even more. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was, uh -huh. it was a public service sort of health yeah. matter. You Netflix, know? Netflix gave Zack Snyder $160 million to keep him out of the cinemas. 
We need to save the people. <laughs> like we got to we got to release this on as small a screen as possible. Yeah. Preferably watch it on your phone, not even on your monitor. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. All full films stay the f away. Good luck yeah. with the extended yeah, versions. Don't watch it. Don't watch it. Hello, you just listened to a segment of the podcast Every Frame of Pause, or EFAP, hosted by YouTubers Mauler, Rags, and Fringy, and joined by a cycling variety of guests across the internet. They critically analyze media with exhaustive detail while pausing at every single frame. Subscribe to the EFAP channel and catch new episodes on Saturdays, as well as catch their smaller videos reacting to the latest and not-so-greatest movies and TV shows throughout the week. You can also subscribe here to EFAP highlights for the latest shorts, clips, and supercuts also up uploaded throughout the week. Links to all the relevant channels can be found in the description section below, as well as links to their communities on Reddit and Discord. Thanks for watching.